It is that time of year. The annual PWI 500 rankings drop this week, which is always sure to make wrestling fans lose their minds. For those who don't know, or are too ignorant to listen when I remind you of this every year, it is a worked list. It is a worked list. There is no big committee. There is no uh, legitimacy to it of any kind. The criteria they used for it was an evaluation period of July 1st of last year to June 30th of this year. That is the cutoff. You need to have a minimum of 10 matches total, and they rank each person by in-ring achievement, including their win-loss record and championships won, their influence on the industry, their technical ability, and their competition, their level of competition. So, their success against high-caliber opponents. If you go on an undefeated streak like Bill Goldberg, but you're wrestling people like Luigi Primo, the pizza dough guy, you're not going to be ranked very high. Now, all that being said, I still think it's fun to take a look at this, knowing, you know, taking it for what it is, and see who they picked and where they ranked. So let's run through this year's top 10 ranked male wrestlers in the PWI 500. Not surprisingly... Roman Reigns takes the number one spot this year. No argument there. He is the biggest star in the business today, not named Brock Lesnar. And Brock Lesnar hasn't been able to beat him. So based on this criteria, Brock wouldn't even be in this spot anyway. Everything is built around Roman Reigns and the bloodline. And that is going to continue to be the case well into next year. So no debate on that. Kazuchika Okada is ranked number two. Again, no argument. Okada is still one of the best in the entire world. CM Punk, who likes to call himself the best in the world. Number three. So that evaluation period would include his return last year, his matches with Darby Allin, Eddie Kingston, MJF, his title win at Double or Nothing. He was the biggest star that Tony Khan had under contract, even though he did miss the first and last months of the evaluation period. You could certainly make the case that Punk should be in the top three. Hangman Adam Page is number four, the highest he'll ever be on this list. Just imagine if you're Hangman, you see your ranking there. If he had just been ranked one spot above, if you if you swapped him and Punk and Punk was number four and Page was number three, oh, the people that would be pitching a shit fit right now. Uh, number five is Bobby Lashley. And Bobby Lashley has had a hell of a year. He's had a babyface turn in there. But even before the babyface turn, you know, he was he was kicking ass on the roster. He got his match that he's wanted for years with Brock Lesnar back at the Royal Rumble. He beat Brock Lesnar. He won back the championship. And then he got hurt. But thankfully, it wasn't anything too serious where they had a cut on him or anything like that. He came back in time for WrestleMania. But he's been on a tear recently. They put the U.S. title on him. But, you know, by default, he's the most... Dominant champion they have on Monday Night Raw. Uh, I think Lashley being in the top five is is well-deserved. Number six is Cody Rhodes, who won the TNT Championship, made a big return at WrestleMania this year, and then beat Seth Rollins three straight times, including with a torn peck at Hell in a Cell. I don't, I don't know how you can't argue that Cody doesn't deserve on a list like this to be in the top ten, maybe even in the top five. Maybe you can argue, you know, pull Hangman out of the top five, put Cody in that spot. Uh, Number seven is Brian Danielson, who debuted in AEW in September. He had that big match with Kenny Omega at last year's Grand Slam show. They went to a 30-minute draw. And then he couldn't beat Hangman to win the AEW world title. He couldn't beat Jon Moxley at Revolution. And he couldn't win a double or nothing in the Anarchy in the Arena match. Then he got hurt. And he missed the entire final month of the evaluation period. So he's probably lucky to even be this high on the list at all. And I think Danielson is still one of the best in the world. I love Brian Danielson. I I don't know that he necessarily should have even been in this spot, though. I mean, just going based on their own criteria. Number eight is Vikingo, who works for AAA. Number nine is Big E. And I, look, I, I like Big E. But him being in this uh, top 10, I think, is questionable. I, I, I know that during this evaluation period is when he won the WWE Championship. I know he cashed in money in the bank and he won the title. 
But he had a very lackluster run. And then he missed the last few months of the evaluation period with a broken neck. I don't think he belongs in the top 10. At number 10 is Jonathan Gresham, who is mailing a copy of this list to Tony Khan as we speak. Certified mail. So that's the top 10. Now 11 through 20 is Shingo Takagi, and this is in order by the way, Shingo Takagi, John Moxley, Matt Cardona, Josh Alexander, Hiroshi Tanahashi, MJF, Seth Rollins, Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, and Drew McIntyre. And as I read off those names, there is one very glaring omission from that list. How the hell is Will Ospreay not even in the top 20? He's top 10 easily. They don't even have him in the top 20. They have him down at number 27. Look at some of these names they placed in front of him. Josh Alexander at 14. Moose at 21. AC Mack at 25. Fucking Braun Breaker. One spot ahead of Will Ospreay at number 26. High comedy is what this list is. You'd have to be high to not rank Will Ospreay at least in the top 20. How does that even happen? But then I remind myself, it's a worked list. Even even people who recognize that these are worked lists can still work themselves into a shoot. And I have to calm down and say it's not worth getting upset about. But I do think that is completely ridiculous. So anyway, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the top 50 or 100 or anything like that. That's your top 20 for the PWI uh, 500. Will Ospreay, way down on the list at number 27. 